this is Gerd Leonhardt. Welcome to another edition of Meeting of the Minds. Today I have with me from Sydney, Australia, Ross Dawson, futurist, author, strategist and a good friend. So we're in Switzerland uh, today and it's great to catch up with you, uh, Gerd. I spent much of my childhood in uh, Switzerland and uh, now we're back here. Lucky but you. It's, <laughs> it's interesting to think about the future of Switzerland. What do you see in the future of Switzerland, Gerd? Well, I, I'm, I'm fully qualified to talk about Switzerland now because I just became a Swiss citizen a year ago. So I, I, I'm a Swiss person now, so I'm allowed to talk about Switzerland. I think what we're seeing in Switzerland is a very interesting scenario, is the uh, totally intact ecosystem of, of, of uh, democracy, of values, of people who like each other, take care of each other, and it's, an, it's a real island uh, of serenity, nature, uh, and people respect the law, and, and they have collective thinking. It's, uh, you know, lots of individual voting on issues, lots of really great things in Switzerland. The thing about Switzerland that, that really needs to happen is, uh, is that Switzerland, in a way, could be a blueprint for a, a global economy of how this would work across the world at the same time that Switzerland is now in danger to become a theme park, uh, in that, that nature is great here, but uh, that is a major theme in Switzerland. But, for example, the banking laws are, are diminishing now, the secrecy, and that means that the bubble around Switzerland is crumbling. So Switzerland is no longer going to be living under this nice dome that we all enjoyed being in it for the time. But it's like visiting and going inside the dome here. Right? You're inside the dome and it's beautiful. It's not sustainable. No, that dome isn't sustainable because the factors around that kept up the dome, they're, they're removed. You know, the laws and environment and... So my, my, uh, my view on the future of Switzerland is that we have to get used to that dome is evaporating and we have to reinvent what the island is. I just gave the keynote at a conference in Interlaken and one of the speakers was saying that the future of Switzerland was in uh, Swissness and that this quality of Swissness of precision and detail and uh, you know, dedication to work. And I have to say I was a little uh, cautious at this idea because I think that the there is some strength in the Swiss tradition. You know, the Swiss tradition is enormously strong, and some of that tradition, uh, I think indeed that idea of you know, getting things right and doing things well is very powerful. Yet the, I think that being overly Swiss in the future, if we understand that idea of Swissness, could actually constrain the, the flexible, adaptable, responsive organizations and economies that we're going to need uh, in the years to come. I mean, what, what do you think of this? idea of Swissness, is that going to be a strength or a weakness in the future? This is a difficult question. I, th I think that, of course, for Swiss people who live here, Swissness is a, a way of life. It's a country brand. And you know, Switzerland has been voted year after year as the number one competitive country in the world and also as one of the happiest countries in the world. But the fact is it was based on the fact that Switzerland was just Switzerland. It was by itself. Right? And, and uh, this was a preferred position and, and uh, as I was saying, a, a bubble, uh, living in this bubble of seven million people. And that bubble bec it becomes unrealistic now. So Swissness is, 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 is a good sort of country brand, but how long will it last you know, when, when the conditions for being Swiss are, are gone? I mean, the reason that we have the big pharma companies here are not because they like the Alps or go hiking, you know, because the taxes are great for them. And, and they can stick their money in the places where they want to stick it without somebody else watching and so on and so on. One thing begets the other, right? Those advantages are evaporating. So how, are, how is Switzerland going to create new advantages? That's my question. It's Switzerland has um, its independence is still it's a strength. And uh, one of the questions for Switzerland has been in European integration and it's chosen not to go that path and it's unlikely to continue to go that. And I think there is some value in that independence. I think there is clearly this uh, deep knowledge based specialist uh, skills uh, that have been very strong, will continue to prosper. But I mean, there's three things that people characterize Switzerland from, uh, from outside. That is banking, chocolate, and watches. And it's interesting how well that the Swiss have reinvented the watchmaking industry. That's an extraordinarily good response to the, the challenges. It's amazing that in the face of digital watches, the Swiss actually, you know, a few individuals actually managed to help maintain Swiss as the, the global center of watchmaking. Banking is under threat as a major center of, uh, in terms of the, the secrecy, banking secrecy, and their banking future. 
But I still think this underlying attitude of deep specialization, world-class specialization is going to be fundamental. And if this applies to some of the new emerging domains around how do we get value from networked, collaborative, uh, you know, m m uh, economy based on data, then Switzerland can create a very prosperous future. I mean, what do, you, what do you think of the <laughs> things we need to do today? It's interesting. That, I mean, of course, you, you as a visitor have this view, and I, I, me living here and being Swiss, German, whatever, you know, seeing it a little bit more from the inside uh, as much as I can. You know, I think that independence is a great thing for individuals to have independence, but, but for organizations and countries or states or, or businesses, interdependence is really much better than independence now uh, because independence is very expensive. It's very hard to keep up when everybody else is interdependent, uh, and it only works in preferred positions. Uh, in this case, the law uh, that allowed a preferred position in Switzerland to exist. When when those change, your independence is gone because you have you cannot sustain that uh, privilege. Right? So my view is that Switzerland needs to learn how to be a player in the interdependent world, and create value for others rather than in, in a world of a protected island. And, uh, and this is a paradigm question. It has nothing to do with Europe. It has nothing to do with being part of the EU or not, but, but with creating value that is an open in, in and in an interdependent world. And one thing that really uh, riles me in Switzerland is this, you know, the idea of market making, creating a market doesn't exist here. You know, you are a market waiter, not a market maker. In some cases, a market taker, maybe. But you know, the idea of what, what uh, many other countries do is creating new markets, that's just not happening here. And that really needs to happen here, creating markets, whether it's technology or, or, uh, or uh, indeed watches. You know, watches is a great example. They didn't create anything new there. They just do better what they've always done. And magically, it works. You know, luckily, it works. But, but they're not creating a market. You know, the new watches are Apple makes the new watch. So what's the summary of what Switzerland needs to do? I think Switzerland really needs to uh, change the uh, needs to transform from this independence to the interdependence. You know, creating, uh, finding finding a way to create value on a large scale, rather than creating value only on, on, on the choose and protected items. You know, banking watches, uh, cheese, and nature. <laughs> you know, and those things will not go away, thankfully. Right? But the preferred position that Switzerland had as a, as an independent country. Th that's unsustainable. I think a, a bit of an example we're seeing around the world in various places, for example, Singapore, uh, which you could argue, no, it's sort of a state-run system, but, but they've had a very good run at, at creating the brand of Singapore, you know, the global hub, innovation, bringing everybody there, being international. Of course, they're, they're about the same size, a little bit smaller than Switzerland. So Brazil, uh, Brazil is, is trying to create a, a Brazilian brand of what they, they're the next America in a way creating that and uh, so I think there are some role models but you could see that Switzerland and Luxembourg for example in a very similar situation is that the the, uh, the dome is removed all of a sudden we're in the wild and everybody's freaking out so Switzerland has five more five more good years left riding on the old money and then it's crunch time so this concludes today's episode of meeting of the minds thanks very much to Ross Dawson for being part of this today if you want to know more about the show, you can go to meetingoftheminds.tv. We are also taking questions and inputs for the next show. Just use the Twitter hashtag meetingoftheminds and we'll be responding and trying to work your comments into our next show. Thanks very much for joining us. Music